All of the problems covered in my videos can be downloaded at accountingworkbook.com. If you go to the website, click the PDF link, you can download a copy of the workbook for yourself. Also on the website, you'll find links to all of my accounting videos, not just the ones I've uploaded to YouTube. I've uploaded over a hundred extra videos on this website that you can't find on YouTube. So I do hope you'll check out accountingworkbook.com. All right, let's begin our problem. In this video, we're going to go through problem 5-3a. It's a percentage of sales problem. If you haven't done so, you really should watch the introduction to the chapter where I, I introduce the idea of allowances and kind of why we have allowances. This video kind of assumes you've watched that and we'll uh, take on the problem from there. So let's go through it and see if we can make sense of this problem. Salazar Inc. shows the following information on May 31st, 2017, the company's fiscal year in. Accounts receivable, there's an allowance, there's sales, and okay, fair enough. The company's accountant estimates bad debts to be 2% of credit sales. All right, so 2% uh, of credit sales. Well, what are our credit sales? We know our total sales are 1850000. We know our cash sales are 448. Well, if our overall sales are 1.85 million, our cash sales are 448, our credit sales have got to be the rest of them, right? Uh, we must have sold like 1.4 million on credit. In fact, if I just deduct the one from the other, you'll find it's 1402000. That's our credit sales. In other words, if I sell stuff, I either am selling it for cash or for credit. Selling for cash means we get the money right away. Well, if I'm worrying about my bad debts, what debts are going to go to bad? Of course, I don't worry about my cash sales, right? Cash sales are irrelevant to bad debts. They're never going bad because I'm always going to collect the money. Credit sales are the ones that might go bad. So I take a percentage of my credit sales when I want to figure out my bad debts. Now, in intro accounting, you'll generally be given this number. You'll say the company's accountant estimates bad debts to be X. And the way they do that is they just base it on past experience. They look at their company's collection records from, you know, historical collection records. And they say, okay, well, usually it's 1% or 2% or 4% or whatever the number is. Uh, and this company said, hey, it's 2% of credit sales. So let's compute 2% of credit sales. 1402 times 2%. Whoops. 28040. So our journal entry here is that amount we compute. When we take a percentage of sales, we are computing the bad debt expense. You'll see when we do a different method in a future problem, the amount we compute is not the bad debt expense. And so we, we treat it a little differently. But here we've said, look, 2% of all my sales are going bad. That's my bad debt expense. This is an estimate. Remember, we can't wait to find out who isn't going to pay us. We record the journal entry right there on the spot at our fiscal year end. We don't wait until next year when some customers pay, some customers don't. We have to record this estimate at year end and for reasons I stated in the introduction video to the topic. Um, so let's do the journal entry then. We figured out our bad debt expense. The journal entry here is always the same. It's always on the fiscal year end date. Our fiscal year end was May 31st, 2017. We debit bad debt expense. We credit Allowance for doubtful accounts. For how much? 28040. So to answer the first question is prepare the adjustment. Done, right? We have prepared the adjustment. Show how accounts receivable net would be disclosed on the balance sheet. Okay, that's a little bit trickier. Let me... Got a little bit of space here. So how would accounts receivable net be disclosed on the balance sheet? Well, the answer to that is we take our AR minus our allowance for doubtful accounts 
and that equals our net AR. This is a little bit like when we have a capital asset, like a piece of equipment, we say equipment minus the amortization minus the accumulated, rather, depreciation. Uh, what is the net book value of the equipment? Well, same thing with receivables. We're saying, okay, our receivables are $235,000. Our allowance is, well, it started at two grand debit, and that's just from the question. It's a $2,000 debit right there. Uh, and we've just credited it, 28040. So 2000, 28040, take the big side minus the small side. We end up at 26040. So we deduct our allowance. 26040. It's a credit. So, you know, AR is a debit. Allowance is a credit. Allowance is a contra asset account. It exists to negatively impact our receivables. So, 235 minus 26040 is 208,960. Okay, let's think about what all this means because there's a lot of uh, information here. I am owed $235,000, right? I've done work, customers haven't paid me right away, I've sent out bills for $235,000. I know based on past experience, not all of my customers pay. Some customers go bankrupt, some customers just disappear, some customers dispute that they owe $235,000 or whatever number they owe within that $235,000. Most will pay, almost all will pay, some will not. I have to estimate those that aren't going to pay. I can't wait until they don't pay. Otherwise, I'm violating that principle that says I need to record revenues and the related expenses in the same fiscal period. Uh, used to be called the matching principle. Now it's uh, an unnamed principle. I don't know why they didn't keep the same name. Uh, it drives me crazy. I always want to say matching principle, matching principle, but uh, that's uh, old terminology, I, I think, anyway. Um, so what happens here well we have 235 grand that we're legally owed based on our estimate based on our accountant's estimate 26 grand of that is not going to come in that's what our allowance is where the allowance is an account that tracks what we expect not to be paid from our ar so how much do i actually expect to collect i actually expect to collect 208960 this is the number that appears on the face of the balance sheet. If you look up your favorite company's financial statements, they'll list their receivables net. They don't list their receivables gross. Why? Because as a shareholder, remember when we talk about assets, we're talking about uh, something that provides a future economic benefit to the company. Well, I, if, I, if I'm running this company, I'm saying I have receivables of 235. Yes, that's true, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get them all. The future economic benefit of my receivables is only 208. That's the number we report to our shareholders on the face of our balance sheet. So the steps here, step one, compute the percentage of sales, right? A percentage of our sales to compute the bad debt expense. Step two, do the journal entry. Step three, update your allowance T account. Step four, figure out what AR net is. If you follow those steps when you're doing percentage of sales, you can't go wrong. Step one, bad debt expense computation. Step two, journal entry for bad debt expense. Step three, update your allowance D account. And step four, compute your ending balance of net accounts receivable. Stay tuned for the next video.